In January 1962, President John F. Kennedy met with Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, General Maxwell Taylor, the Joint Chiefs, Deputy Secretary of Defense Gilpatrick, and General Paul Hawkins at the mansion of Kennedy's father, Joseph P. Kennedy, in Palm Beach. Gilpatrick was assigned to take notes and recorded that the President emphasized the importance of playing down the number of US military personnel in Vietnam. Kennedy also stressed the need to avoid the impression that the US was participating in combat operations. Gilpatrick fleshed out Kennedy's policy in a memorandum the next day and assigned responsibility for developing a suitable explanation to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of Defense. Kennedy was forced to participate in this deception at a press conference on January 15th. He was asked whether US troops were involved in combat in Vietnam and replied that they were not. However, US advisors were going on combat missions with South Vietnamese forces, American pilots were flying US combat aircraft painted in South Vietnamese colors, and three weeks earlier, on December 22, 1961, before Kennedy's statement, Spec 4 James Thomas Davis became the first American to die in ground combat in South Vietnam. Toward the end of February, the State Department issued a new press directive mandating additional measures to conceal US involvement in Vietnam from the media, and also called for protection for the South Vietnamese government from the American press. As a consequence of the directive, the US military command banned journalists from its helicopters during military operations, and US officials further reduced the information provided to them. Junior advisors and officials, however, provided details of military assistance and combat operations, and unaware that they were acting under orders from Washington, the reporters assumed that Ambassador Nolting and General Hawkins in particular were responsible for the obvious evasiveness, and proceeded to criticise them. The concern was that stories from the foreign press on US participation in the war and South Vietnamese weakness would undermine national morale and cause the leader of South Vietnam, President Diem, to lose face, reducing willingness to cooperate with American officials. But this approach was counterproductive, and the press received enough unofficial information from junior officials to write damaging articles about Diem's government, which prompted it to further conceal and deceive. Failing to understand the psychology of the South Vietnamese, American correspondents then came to view Diem as an adversary, and received most of its information from South Vietnamese dissidents and disgruntled American personnel. At 7.15am on February 27th, two AD-6 Sky Raiders bombed and strafed the Independence Palace. South Vietnamese Navy ships in the Saigon River engaged the aircraft with their anti-aircraft guns, and the South Vietnamese Air Force dispatched fighter aircraft to deal with the attackers. Intercepted radio traffic between the conspirators indicated their target was the news, and in fact the part of the palace they lived received the only damage. The foreign press, however, driven by their dislike of Diem, reported that the attack demonstrated the unpopularity of his government. The Arvin continued to mount large operations in the first two months of 1962 with poor results. While the VC had grown from 18,000 strong in December 1961 to between 20 and 25,000 through recruiting and infiltration, according to US intelligence estimates, prompting President Kennedy to declare that victory in South Vietnam was 10 years away. The momentum then began to shift, and would continue to do so during the remainder of Diem's time in office. Government patrols became more aggressive, more emphasis was placed on small units and night operations, and distress calls from villages and outposts were responded to more rapidly and with greater determination. As a consequence, confidence in government forces grew, and villagers began to provide more information, which enabled government forces to take aggressive action against the communists. Despite its hostility to Diem, the foreign press reported that South Vietnamese forces were gradually turning the tide against the communist guerrillas, and during the first half of the year, the strategic Hamlet program also became the core of a new military, political and economic strategy. 
The improvement in the Diem government's efforts and the growth of US involvement in South Vietnam after General Taylor's mission in 1962 convinced the communist leadership in North Vietnam that it could not win a rapid victory in the South without the massive reinforcement of North Vietnamese troops which was sure to result in direct US action, the worst outcome possible for the communists. The most militant of the communist leaders in Hanoi, Le Juan, advocated a protracted, low-intensity struggle, with actions limited to avoid the US moving from a special war in which the South Vietnamese fought with US support and advisers, to a limited war with the direct involvement of US combat troops. The communists offered to negotiate with Diem and expressed their willingness to accept a neutral South Vietnam with a coalition government that would include all political, social and religious groups. Le Juan believed that repeated victories over the South Vietnamese could force the US to accept such a coalition, which the communists would then infiltrate with politicians that secretly served Hanoi. <laughs>